Well, it's interesting. I, I've been struck that almost all geopolitical risk has sort of been <clears throat> ignored by the market. It's not just this this Trump trip, you know, which I remember the, the summit with Putin was the end of a week-long trip that, particularly here in Europe, was a disaster. I mean, you know, he goes at the end and, and plays kissy foot with, with, with Vladimir Putin. Remember beforehand, he was beating up on Angela Merkel, beating up on Theresa May. I mean, all the allies were getting their, their heads kicked in by him. So it was really a week where everything that we had come to assume about the Western alliance gets turned on its head. We have a trade war breaking out both of the Chinese and the EU, and we have Brexit, which is going to hell in a handbasket here in the UK. So we have a huge amount of political risk out there that the market seemed to have ignored or or priced in, I guess, but I don't see the pricing in argument. I, I, I see uh, the there's so much noise going on right now, the markets can't absorb it and have decided to ignore it. I think, Peter, markets are also trying to, trying to quantify what weakening relations with Europe ultimately means. Does it mean heightened rhetoric on the trade front, more trade tariffs uh, imposed by the European Union? You know, what is the fallout from this extraordinary week where clearly the two leaders, Angela Merkel, President Trump, you know, didn't really get along, yet President Trump was able to uh, strike a chord with President Putin? Well, you know, from a from a economic perspective, the trade war issue, and remember, there is a huge dispute right now between the EU and the U.S. on this, which was Trump has once again uh, flared up by calling the EU a, a, a trade foe, if you remember, just before the summit. So in terms of the markets and, and the, 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 the global economy, that's clearly more of a risk. We're not going to see the geopolitical risk with Putin, I, I don't think, <laughs> flare up into a hot war. So there is no sort of, you know, actual conflict on, 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 the, on the horizon. But remember, look, you know, geopolitics has an impact. Instability has an <coughs> impact. It means companies become more resistant to, to investing in, in certain countries uh, or investing writ large. You know, we have basically the U.S. economy, which is powering on, uh, and we've seen increases in, in employment and investment. Europe has still been in this relatively weak state where, you know, the Eurozone was a surprise outperformer last year. It's been much weaker this year. And the question is whether any of this geopolitical instability, be it Brexit or Trump and Putin, begins to feed into economic sentiment in Europe, and, and, and particularly when it comes to capital investment. I think we haven't seen the fallout yet, but I'd be surprised right now if a lot of corporate boards aren't saying this is not the time to be doubling down on European investment. So I think it is going to have an impact. We just don't know what it is just yet. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.